We're live. I know it's weird though, because we were like live and together. Now we're live and apart again this week. I know. So here we Sigh. are. So yes, Sigh. we were just discussing. Yes, for those of you that uh, are just joining us, Anne and I were just discussing what I'm going to wear for uh, my stepdaughter Sarah's wedding because that's coming up in June, and I am not much of a clothier, uh, as you know, though I do know what I look good in, and I actually do have some taste in, even though I choose not to cover myself in. I don't know. It's just so much work. Anyway, and. Anne said she'd help me. She's got to help me. <laughs> I know. I haven't been to a mall in like seven years, so we're probably going to go to one together. Uh, oh, hey, we'll do some video. <laughs> you know what? That's actually a really good idea. So, because uh, uh, I'm going to be back in MI next week for a very short trip, a quick turnaround. But um, yeah, so we're going to go to the mall together. So we'll have to record that fresh hell because I do not shop well. <laughs> I'm a bad shopper. <laughs> I'm going to do some reconnoitering so I can like get us to the right places quickly. And then I'm also going to pick out a crappy uh, mall restaurant, like, you know, PF Chang's or uh, California pizza company where we can, uh, where we can get um, whatever girl drink drunk uh, drinks they have there. And, um, you know, oh, in the basic and Julie said she'd help me too. And Julie, you're best. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, because uh, Aunt Julie actually made my wedding dress, which was a miracle because, uh, A, it looked amazing. I, I looked fantastic in that dress. And B, um, it saved me from having to go to a David's bridal, which is literally when I die and go to hell, that will be my bad place, will be every version of David's bridal. <sighs> um, excuse me, but that bow makes your butt look really big. <laughs> But it will be a bow that I won't be able to take off of me. It will be like my forever bow. <laughs> It'll be like just changing different huge bows. <laughs> uh, I know. It's, you know, it's so funny because everybody has their thing that they like are afraid of or hate. I just I hate shopping and I hate shopping for clothes more than anything. And I don't really know where that came from, but it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, uh, but uh, on a brighter note, uh, today, Ann and I, uh, and thanks to Aunt Julie, Aunt Julie, this was your, all of your doing is that you sent both Ann and I <clears throat> something on Facebook about Gwen Frostick a few days ago, and it was specifically about um, her house becoming part of the, was it Ann, the National Registry? National, National um, Historic Places. She, as Historic. of March 22nd of this Yay. year, she's now, uh, her, um, her studio uh, slash um, shop slash publishing house slash, you know, whatever is now, uh, and the land it's on is now part of the National Historic Places in the which United is, States. Which is fantastic. So that prompted this, the thought of, well, Anne, how come you and I have never talked about Gwen Frostick? Because she's amazing. And honestly, as far as historical people in our lives, Gwen Frostick is a big part of the brother sister's existence. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. Um, so, for those of you that have no idea who Gwen Frostick is, she is, if you don't come from Michigan, you might not know who she is because she's very much a Michigan icon. She was born and raised in Michigan. Um, and for those people that live in Michigan and know her work, um, pretty outstanding. So we thought we would put together a little, this is who Gwen Frostick is. This is why she's awesome. This is why you should know about her. This is why more people should know about her. So I'm going to go ahead and bring her into the stream here. And I'm going to get rid of our brand real quick like a bunny. Where is it? There it is. And oh, that's what I'm talking about. And we'll get to talking about it. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, you're looking at, the, so this picture, this is Gwen Frostick. Um, and you're also looking at some of her artwork. So just to, so you know who she is, she was an artist, poet, naturalist, role model, entrepreneur, super genius is mm -hmm. how I think you can describe her and the impact that, that she's had. So, uh, and would you like to talk about uh, who she was? I would love to. Uh, first, though, I, I do want to mention that uh, one of the reasons why um, Gwen Frostick means so much to me is because, one, she was introduced to us by our grandmother brothers. And if the um, brother sisters uh, have a patron, a secular patron saint, it would be Avis Brothers. And Avis Brothers introduced us to Gwen Frostick on a camping trip 
when we were little girls, and I mean, I'm talking elementary school, uh, she took us to her studio. And it was uh, the first time I realized that you could be a woman from Michigan and be an artist. That was the first time I've ever seen that. For me, artists were old white guys uh, who were in museums. So this was the first time I ever realized that that and I also realized that the natural world could be an inspiration and that the smallest parts of the natural world, the ones that were around you every day, could be that inspiration. It didn't have to be this ginormous thing, this ocean or this landscape or whatever. It could be the smallest thing. And that was really that that shaped a lot of of, of how I view the world now. So that's why she was very important to me. And I owe my grandma brothers that for introducing that to me. Uh, Jenny, it's, it's, go ahead. No, no. I, I was wondering, I was curious as to why she's so important to you. Well, you know, it's funny because as children, I would say you were always much more in touch with that uh, emotional center that kind of, and I wasn't. Um, I just know that I really liked going there. It was neat. It smelled like outside. And I couldn't, unlike you, I could not express why I liked it. I just, I loved it. And I looked and it was like, every time we went up North, it was cool because I'm like, oh, we're going to get to go to Gwen Prostix. And it's not that um, I liked looking at the printing presses and I really just liked going and looking at the pond outside of her house. And I liked the, the cool green roof with all the grass growing on top of it. And it wasn't until I got older that I really started to appreciate and understand uh, her art and the simplicity of um, both what she was drawing and what she was writing. So that took much longer for me. I just knew that as a little girl, I really loved it. And I liked that Grandma Brothers took us there. And I liked the fact that nobody else went there. Like when we were kids, nobody else was doing this. Everybody else was just going camping and going to the lake. But we were going camping and going to the lake. And we were going to Gwen Prostics. So mm -hmm. there you go. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So a little bit about Gwen Frostick. Gwen Frostick was born, raised, lived her entire life in Michigan. She was born in um, April 26, 1906 in Sandusky, Michigan. And at the time, not that Sandusky is a big metropolis now, but then it was the, literally the middle of nowhere. So she was born in a very isolated place. 1906, you have to remember, pre-antibiotics. Not very many people had cars. We're only about 35 years into sepsis theory. So the idea that germs cause disease, you know, so. It was a, this was a different time and place. Uh, she lived until April 25th of 2001 and she died in Benzonia, Michigan. And actually her, um, she's buried in the cemetery there. So Jenny, I think we need to go there and, um, have a little, uh, pilgrimage to the, um, burial place of Gwen Frostick because, you know, Benzonia is actually in Northern. So here's Michigan. Benzonia is like it's on one of our slides. <laughs> So. Oh, good. Okay. Awesome. Put awesome. So it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not that far from, you know, if you're in Michigan, it's not that far from you. Um, no. it, when she was a little girl, she suffered from really high fevers uh, and it left her, it was an unknown illness. Some, there's some speculation that maybe she had polio, but it was never confirmed. Anyway, it left her with like a cerebral palsy, like um, after effects. She had a limp and her hands were very weak, which was interesting to think that she was an artist and did a lot of carving. So she worked really hard to maintain any sort of strength in her hands so that she could do her artwork. So that was too. And so that affected her entire life. It was hard enough to be a woman in this time, but she was a handicapped woman at this time. So her, the fact that she was self-supportive and not just self-supported, but a millionaire when she died, uh, speaks to how hard she worked. She graduated, her uh, parents actually went to Eastern Michigan University when it was still um, Eastern Normal College. Uh, they both got teaching certificates and her father ended up being a principal at Wyandotte High School, which is where she spent uh, a, the majority of her later youth and she graduated from Wyandotte High School. She went to Eastern Michigan University I got her teaching certificate. Uh, Jenny and I are excited about that because we both went to Eastern Michigan University. She also went to Western Michigan University and that's where she studied art. Uh, in 1929, I think this is when she really started. I mean, she had spent time up north in the Sandusky area, but this is where she really got to know the Frankfurt Benzonia area because she was a camp counselor in 1929 at a place called OSHA of the Dunes in Frankfurt. So I think that's where she first found her love of that area because that's where she ended up moving and really establishing. Well, she was an established artist before she moved up there permanently. 
But I think that in influenced where she ended up. Um, she started as a metal artist and um, taught school. Uh, she ended up leaving the metal arts because um, during World War II, metal was so hard to come by. And she ended up working um, with uh, linoleum. So she would carve things. It's actually called... Um, What's it called? I have it here in graduated commission. Oh, uh, linen cut, lin o cut block prints, which were actually carved prints, but it's basically linoleum. So carving out of plastic. So she switched to that um, uh, during World War II. She actually also worked as a tool and dye drafts person. So she was drawing, you know, pictures for tool and dye in the um, bomber factory of Willow Run here in Ypsilanti. And um, she worked six days a week. So that's impressive because here she is with a limp and weak hands and she's a draftsman, a draftsperson, drawing all the, you know, the technical designs for different, um, different mechanical um, objects. So very cool. <clears throat> um, after World War II, she started, and this is the company that uh, Gwen Frostick is known for, Press Craft Paper, and she started it in Wyandotte. And I believe, because I read it, one of her books, I believe she started it in her parents' garage. So this is where she started her press, um, press craft paper company, and she was basically using her drawings and making things like uh, stationery. So that's where she got started. She was successful enough to be able to open a summer shop in Frankfurt, Michigan. And this is the time in Michigan, in fact, you see it even now, when up north resort areas pretty much folded up the sidewalk once um, once uh, Labor Day passed because nobody would come up there. So she would open up a storefront downtown in Frankfurt in the summer, sell her paper craft, and then close up in the fall and head back to Wyandotte. And she did that for a number of years until she bought 40 acres in the wilderness um, outside of Benzonia, Michigan, which is about, I don't know, 15 miles um, east of Frankfurt. So it's not on Lake Michigan. It's, a, it's about 15 miles into the woods. And there she started designing her studio slash home slash print shop slash store. And the whole idea was that it would be one with nature. So you would come across this building and it would almost blend into the natural environment of the wilderness, of the forest. And so it was all made of found uh, rocks and boulders. And then the roof was made out of green sod. So it continued to grow. It wasn't just a sod roof, but a roof that continued to grow, which you see nowadays, but she was... I'm not exaggerating, like 50 years ahead of herself on that. And then there was, a natural, mm -hmm. there was a natural <laughs> spring on the property. And so she had it so that the spring actually bubbled up into the studio. And then her studio was set up where she had all these little nooks and crannies and windows where she could go and sit quietly and wait for nature to come to her so she could sketch it. And then she would sketch it carve out the sketching onto blocks and then the blocks would be used in these old well at the time they weren't old but she got like seven printing presses from germany and then they would print out the her paper craft so that's what it was so she would draw carve the blocks and then the uh, the block work would be used in her printing and she um this opened in 1964 with her first 40 acres it expanded to 285 acres at at uh, one point, she employed almost 50 people to work for her. Um, and like I said, her artwork depicts the natural world around her. So there's a lot of flowers and uh, forest animals and insects. Um, and then her, uh, her poetry reflects that artwork. Uh, it seems simplistic, both her art and her poetry, but really what it is, is it's accessible. And... Um, truly ob observant because she's not looking at the big things she's looking at the tiny things and how much we pass those up like oh that's a weed oh that's a ladybug i know those things already but what she did was she showed how truly beautiful they are the littlest things of course she also loved dogs of course she did <laughs> <laughs> so, so um go ahead this is the list of why she's awesome. Do you want to talk about this too? Sure. Sure. Okay, um, go for it. She was awesome. Uh, she, uh, because of her unique paper craft, uh, she did prints. Uh, she did stationery. She did books of her poetry, which also included her prints. She did things like gift wrap. And the thing is, her work, her printed work was not out of the range of anybody. Like you and I could go there as children 
grandma could give us five dollars and we could pick out a dozen pieces of uh, individual stationery because she had it set up where you could buy you know a whole like you know, thing of stationery, or you could pick out your own cards individually. And so we might get $5 and we could pick out a dozen cards with envelopes and they would wrap them all up for us. She had special wrapping paper. So every time you left Gwen Frostig, it came in this wrapped little bundle with a little sprig of evergreen and a little sticker on it. And so you had your own. So it was like something that was so accessible even to children. So that was what was really cool is that not only did you have this, there were these beautiful things, but they were beautiful things that you could have as well. And that was so hard because usually you go into places when you were little, don't touch that, stand still, be quiet, you know, and it wasn't like that. You know, it was like we could we could appreciate the art ourselves. Well, and um, you could go a, all over mm -hmm. the studio. I'm like you could go into what was great about that is that you could go into all of those places um, that were her spots, like you could go into her little library or you could go sit in those little rooms and look at the pond and look at what she was seeing. Um, mm -hmm. And it was rare that those things were off limits to you. And so that was another thing that was really cool about it is like, here you are working, you're in this woman's home and studio and you're allowed into these places where most of the time you would never be allowed into those places, you know, which is, which is awesome. Uh, Monica, thanks for joining us. She says the littlest things like plants and animals are responsible for human sustenance. I know, right? So right. yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So, and then she had her printing presses that were going almost all the time. And you could actually look down into the printing press area and see the printing presses going. And they made quite quite a racket, but they was it was like a dance down there with all these moving parts, you know. And, and you have to remember that this woman used to work as a tool and die drafts person. So she had a really good understanding of how these things were working. So it was pretty cool. Uh, to, um, to say the least, Monica, this place and person, uh, truly, she was truly amazing. And so and her place yeah. still to this day is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, another reason why she was awesome is, of course, her drawing depicts uh, the natural beauty found in Michigan. Uh, her uh, poetry uh, and uh, she wrote her own poetry and she published it with her original designs. She built a mil multi-million dollar business before women could get a loan without a husband or father's uh, co-signing it. She built a million dollar business before legal protection offered by people with disabilities acts was put into place. She was a successful artist when artists, the successful artists usually meant men and usually meant white Europeans. Uh, she employed many people in the papercraft empire. And at the time, even now, Benzonia isn't a bustling, you know, I mean, it's got a great tourist industry, but she was, you know, you know, um, employing people even in the off season. So she was a, one of the larger employers in that area. Um, she gave millions of dollars to Western Michigan University upon her death. Um, she built a nature sanctuary and opened it up to everyone. She showed that uh, a girl from Michigan could be an artist and make a living from it. She introduced people from around the world to the natural beauty of Michigan. And uh, like I said, natural registry of historic places as of March 22nd, 2021 of this year. So, yeah. yeah. So there Amazing is a woman. huge list of why she was awesome. Uh, and to answer your question, Maki, yes, uh, she uh, did tool and dive. Uh, she was a draftsman uh, at Willow Run for the war effort. So, yes, that was uh, what she did, um, you know, again doing her part for the war, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, you know, you look at what she did in her life. She was 95 when she passed and you just look at what she accomplished in that. And it's, it's just, yeah. So anyway, it's more stuff about why she is awesome. Um, the visual arts building at Western Michigan university is named after her. It's called the uh, Frostick school of art. Uh, her art is uh, art is in the collection of the Detroit Institute of Art. Uh, she's an inductee into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame. She has received awards from many art organizations and honorary doctorates from a number of universities. And she got a multi-page spread in the Martha Stewart Living Magazine. <laughs> That's right. Martha Stewart knows about Gwen Frostick. Why don't you? Boom. <laughs> When I got married and I had to, you know, you write all your thank you notes after you get married. I went to Gwen Frostick before that summer and I got enough cards, enough for her little stationery so that that would be my thank you notes to people. So, you know, I, I put that in my like wedding budget. I'm like, I need to go to Gwen Frostick's and I need to get enough stationery so I can write all my thank you notes for my wedding and my um, right, uh, shower. So there you go. Nice. Well done. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, that is true, Aunt Julie. Aunt Julie says Meyer Gardens has an area in her name. Yes, it's like the. That's I true. 
-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's um the like shadow one. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's like the Gwen Frostic. I want to say it's like the Shadow Garden or something like that. I can't mm -hmm. remember. Um, oh, cool. This is uh, Monica. My neighbor just turned 100, was a rosy repair of the bomber. She was a tiny five foot in heels, 100 pounds soaking wet, just small enough to fit in an engine. Perfect. <laughs> That's wow. <tiny. laughs> mm -hmm. Super tiny. Uh, so we've got a couple of things that show her work. Um, if you look this this picture that you're seeing right here, that first one, um, that's what that's her home. So that roof that we were talking about, that grass roof, um, you can see it right there. Um, you can see the one that you're looking at down in the bottom center. Those are the linoleum blocks. In fact, all of her linoleum blocks are on display within the studio. So you can actually go to the studio. You can walk by uh, the area where they keep her blocks. Um, and then you're seeing some of the work um, here. This is one of her books, uh, A Place on Earth, the one in the um, upper center. And these are examples of the, the stationery. And you can see some of the, you know, the majority of her work um, is is the natural world. So it's birds, it's trees, it's insects, it's plants, you know, and flowers, trees. And that's, you know, that's what you're looking at. Like I said, it, it is all a reflection of, of the things that she has seen and the things that she has noticed. And here's some more, a little bit, uh, a little bit more closer view of some of those things. These are some of the, the ones I picked. These are some of my favorites. Uh, and again, um, Probably my favorite favorite is the, uh, the the blue hair, and that's the one thing I showed on the cover slide. That's one of my favorite things of her, and it does. It reminds me of uh, of my grandmother because she always seemed to spot the blue herons, um, and I can remember her, you know, telling me about that the first time I ever saw a blue heron or noticed seeing one is because Avis pointed it out to me, and the fact that they kick their legs back to act as a tail as they fly, and that was like that was something that I was loved. Um, the other thing is I love this, uh, the one down at the bottom towards the left uh, with the quote that says, uh, let them live in your eye, not die in your hand. And I, I absolutely love that because, you know, we tend to pull nature from its home in order to make, you know, to put it in our house and make it look beautiful. But I, I love the idea of just leaving it where it is. So the other one up there is the, the raccoon has always been a favorite of mine as well. So, but these are some examples of Again, this really beautiful, what, and I, like I said, simple is the wrong word to describe her art. It, to me, though, it's almost like when you talk about simple, uh, you talk about, you know, people talk about French cuisine in terms of its simplicity, but it's also its simplicity, which allows you to be, to, to make it excellent. And I, I look at Gwen Frostick's art like you do French cuisine, that it's, yes, it may look simple, but there's something about it that is so exquisite that to me there, you know, th those things work the same in my head. So that's what I think. Uh, as far as, far as, say again. Oh, I agree. No, I, I was going to say simplicity is deceptive. Uh, it makes you think it's easy. Simplicity and easiness are two different things. Well, and especially when you consider that if you're looking at this work, these are things that she not only sketched, but then she carved them into linoleum, which right. is, it's not an easy thing to do. So <laughs> you, know, you, you think about the exactly. time and, you know, the technique that it, that it is to do that. So mm -hmm. it really is remarkable when you think about it in that sense. And to uh, be able to think about, think about like, how is this going to translate into a print from a block? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's another thing too, is that how does this translate? So not only does she have to draw what she's seeing, but then how does it translate into another medium, which is not an easy thing to do. Nope. Nope. Uh, this is uh, where to find her work. If you're looking for Gwen Frost, again, Anne was describing it earlier, like on the map, you can see you uh, find it in the lower peninsula um, up um, off of uh, kind of Highway 31 in uh, Benzonia, Michigan. Uh, so you can visit the studio. The studio is still open. Uh, they're open pretty much year round, uh, even though um, I think it's her nephew that kind of owns the business now. So Actually, you can also he still runs he still runs the printing presses, but it's owned by it's no longer owned by the family. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to gwenfrostic.com. Uh, you can also find them on Facebook at Gwen Frostic Prints. So and you can order. So like if you find things that you mm -hmm. like, uh, you can order it and have it mailed to you using good old snail mail. Uh, but I, I really recommend going there. I mean, it's one of these places that it really is a, a, a wonder, not just 
the being able to be in her studio, but seeing what she saw and, and going to this really exquisite home and studio, it's just, you know, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is. Let's take a, we can go ahead and take a look at, this is um, what the inside of the studio looks like. So if you're looking at the picture to the left there, that's the, uh, the entrance. And again, you can see what it's surrounded by. It's, it's green um, inside. It, you know, one of the things that's unique about it, of course, is the stonework um, that was used to, to, to build the foundations of the house. And you see that stonework throughout the entire structure. There's also a ton of woodwork in it. Like I said, there's the fountain that you can see right now. This is the bubbling spring. Um, they have what's the little studio area, the round room, as I always called it. And that's, again, a really, as you walk down the little ramp, you can see uh, that particular room and, you know, and see where all of this is taking place. So it's, and again, the pictures don't, don't do it justice. You really, you should yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> you should totally just go and see it because it's, it's outstanding. And again, it's just like, you can't believe how much cool stuff is in there to buy. I mean, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm not, it's, it's an exceptional place. I know I'm not doing it justice. So uh, this is what it looks like from the outside. So again, that idea that you have something that blends into the natural world. Uh, this is a little bit, uh, you know, bigger picture, the entrance over there towards the left. And then again, that home and studio that she had uh, where she did the majority of her work. And of course, uh, the Heidelberg plant and presses that she used. Um, and again, those presses are still hard at work doing their thing. That's still how they do the work. You know, so these are presses that are, you know, over 100 years old. So, again, mm -hmm. good job. Uh, I can't even imagine trying to maintain and get parts for those. And, you know, that's got to be that's got to be something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, they're from Germany. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you know, again, what's really cool is that as you walk through the shop, you literally can, you know, the the as you, as you kind of walk your way through, you can literally just kind of stand and look at the print, the presses. And, you know, some days they're, uh, they're fired up. Some days they're not it just depends on what day you come in, but you can, you know, overlook this entire printing operation, which is again, is cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's super cool. <laughs> uh, Monica says the house looks like uh, what would happen if Laura Ingalls and J.R.L. Tolkien got together for an architecture project. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, the thing is, like, I look at it sometimes, you know, because I, I wasn't uh, familiar with Frank Lloyd Wright until later in life. So sometimes I look at it, it has this sort of Frank Lloyd Wright sort of um, uh, characteristic to it, this kind of like wanting to blend in with nature, uh, bringing nature into the environment in order to to relax and nurture the individuals that come into the building. So it has that sort of, you know kind of, you know, vibe to it. I can, I can remember thinking that, that it was like a Hobbit hole when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Hobbit was, to this day, is still my favorite book. So yeah, that was appealing to me <laughs> as a 12 year old girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For real. Uh -huh. uh, uh, all right. So if you would like to know more about uh, Gwen Frostick, uh, The Life and Wisdom of Gwen Frostick by Cheryl James, um, published in 99. Uh, and just recently, um, there was a children's book that was published about Gwen Frostick called Nature's Friend, um, written by Lindsay McDivitt and published in 2018. And then, Anne, you said you uh, read a book about her. Which one did you read? I read The Life and Wisdom of Gwen Frostick. Um, I okay. read that in the early 2000s. So it's a very good book. You know, there's a lot of there's some speculation in it because she was uh, she was not inclined. Uh, she was always available for people in her studio, but she was not terribly inclined to talk about herself. And she could be, um, let's just say in a time and a place where ladies were supposed to smile and be polite. Uh, she was not always, you know, she had, <laughs> she had shit to do. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of those making you feel like you, um, weren't bothering her was not necessarily her priority. So she could, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, she wasn't this one of those like, oh, 1950s. Oh, hey, look at me. I'm so polite. And of course, yes. And blah, blah, blah. No, she was not that woman. So not that she was mean or cruel or anything or, or unavailable. She was always very available to in her studio. You would see her walking all the time. Both Jenny and I saw her many times in her studio with her dog following her. She was free with an autograph. If you had 
purchased something and you wanted her to autograph it, she would, if she was there, she would write, if she was right there, you know, so she was very, um, you know, uh, she was not reclusive at all, but she wasn't about to, you know, make a tea party for you. So, you know, that was, <laughs> so, so t- you know, so that was like when, and maybe that was one of the reasons why we don't know her very well is that, you know, she let her art speak for her. She was not necessarily inclined. She was always, um, you know, uh, welcoming, but uh, she wasn't out there marketing herself. She was, you know, she made her art. She marketed her art. Um, that's what it was about. For real. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons to love her is that, you know, in terms of what she wanted for herself and what she was able to do, it's just, this is mm-hmm. just brilliant, you know, and that's right. You know, and so I, you know, we were kind of talking about before we, uh, we came out today about how it's amazing, you know, that, that really outside of Michigan, she's not a well-known uh, artist. And, and so that's why we're talking about her. <laughs> that's why we're talking about her. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I have like where I, um, in, I have, uh, I'm a massage therapist and I have in my room a number of things uh, like a drawer. I have a small dresser uh, drawer uh, set uh, and I have a uh, decoupage on the top, a bunch of her prints. And it's amazing how many uh, Michigan people come in. And it's like, Oh, I see you have Gwen Frostic. Oh, I love Gwen Frostic. So a lot of people that, you know, have been up North are, are familiar with her, but I think she should be much more popular all around the country. Um, and I also think, you know, it's like, here was a, a woman who was unmarried and had a handicapped and was handicapped. And I imagine she had tons of people telling her what she could and couldn't accomplish and that she had to be pretty darn tough to make sure that uh, not only that she herself believed it, but that they believed it too. And even if they, and if they didn't believe it, then they needed to get out of her way. So. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Yeah. So anyway, that's Gwen Frostic. That's Gwen Frostic. Artist, poet, naturalist, role model, entrepreneur, super genius. So Super genius. Yes. And again, so thank uh, you, Gwen. yes. Thank you, Gwen, for being amazing. And again, you guys, if you're interested, um, where to find her work. Again, you guys, I highly recommend taking the trip up to, uh, and it's, you know, that's a whole, that's, a, you know, and the thing is we spent our childhood, you know, we basically camped up in the Frankfurt area, you know, uh, Manistee Frankfurt area pretty much every summer forever. And you always knew that it was going to rain one of those days that you were up there camping. And so the day that it rained, you always went to Glen Frostic. So, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny because I always remember Gren, what Glen Frostic's in the rain. All of my all of my memories of being at Glen Frostic are on rainy days, and how Absolutely. the how the place would smell because of the rain. You know that sort of damp smell, and that's yes. all, that's how I remember it. <laughs> yes. So uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, again, I highly recommend a trip up to her studio. Just make the pilgrimage. And besides, you might as well go up there anyway because there's a ton of stuff to do up there. You know, it's right off of. Um, mm-hmm. Frankfurt is kind of the, you know, that little start to M22. Well, I can't say the start, you know, M22 goes before that, but you know, it's part of that, you know, M22 trip that everybody knows and loves and you can go drink wine, you can go to the beach, you can go to, you know, up to the, um, the, the Manitou oh, Islands, Bear. Sleeping mm-hmm. Bear, you can go to Traverse, you know, you, you can go to the just... original Cherry Republic in, uh, what is it, Glen Arbor? Mmm, cherry wine, mm. delicious. delicious. Fruit wine. Fruit wine. <laughs> it's a <the> peachification <laughs> process. <laughs> it's a cherryfication <laughs> process. <laughs> yes. So enjoy some delicious Michigan fruit wines while you're up there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you, there's no, you know, there's literally, you know, dozens of reasons to go up north anyway. And now we've just given you another one, just in case your calendar exactly. wasn't. And isn't there like a place? Is it Saint Ambrose? like winery and mead and stuff like that is just a hop, skip and jump from there. I think it's St. Ambrose. I mean, I mean, you, if you can't, if you can't find a place to buy wine there, you're not trying. You're so not trying. And there's also what the little beer joint that's up there in Frankfurt. What's the name of that? Oh, storm cloud, storm cloud. That's right. And there's point Betsy up there. You can go see the point Betsy lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And exactly. Yeah. Seriously. I would say go to Trick Dog, but Trick Dog's not there anymore. I'm still in mourning because that place has been closed for like what five or six years now, and I still yeah still yeah. hurts my years, heart. Years. It's not there anymore. Yeah, it hurts. <sighs> yeah. so that yeah. hurts. Oh, there's also a great like um, rails to trail there. So if you want to go hike or ride your bike, there's a wonderful trail. Um, so you know, there's uh, we could, we could so literally again. just do a whole talk about the M22 corridor if we wanted to. So, we could, we could, we yeah. could do like we could do like one for each, like like 
oh, here's what you do in Frankfurt. Here's what you do in Empire. Here's what you do in, you know, fill in the blank. So. <laughs> and, oh, Nicoma. Exactly. Oh, Nicoma. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Monica, we don't mean to make you homesick. Maybe it's time for you to come for a trip. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that's that was our talk about Gwen Frostick and who's amazing. And there you go. And I'm going to go back to our first slide so that you can see her again because she was amazing. So she was amazing. Uh, if you have questions, concerns, or comments about Gwen Frostick or any of her work, of course, you can hit us up on the Facebook. Um, you can also check out those places. You can find the Gwen Frostick prints on the Facebook. You can go to gwenfrostick.com. There you go. There you go. All right. um, yeah. So uh, fill, fill your life with more awesome Michigan art. Correct. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's mine. Here's my, uh, I pulled out my first poetry book that I got from her. Um, at the time, in fact, I'm still like completely passionate about bats, but at the time I was obsessed with bats and I found this uh, one of her poetry books and it had a bat on it and I was like I, I bought it immediately and nice. uh, so yes yeah, so I have one I have a number of her prints and of course uh, one of her books so there you go fantastic mm -hmm. uh, Monica I'm glad to hear you'll be coming out over the summer I know I'm looking forward to doing some summertime work in Michigan as well I have not been you know I've not been to Lake Michigan I don't think I've done any Lake Michiganing since uh, since last week, Jenny Brothers, we went to St. Joseph. That's right. No, I was thinking up North Lake, Michigan was, I think I went oh. like in 2015. It's been too long. So, wow. Um, and Julie, thank you for telling us we did a good job. Thanks for hanging with us. And thank you for the idea. So this was exactly more, more I, I was, I was mad at myself. I'm like, why didn't we think of this sooner, Jenny? But that's why we have oh. such wonderful people in our lives. So they can say, hey, maybe you should talk about this. I'm like, hey, you're right. Yeah. You're right. We should. Yeah. You get it. Can't all be chocolate movies. I don't know. Uh, we have to talk about the Melissa McCarthy, um, Olivia, Octavia Spencer movie that's on Netflix right now for its incredible oh, badness. Okay. <sighs> uh, I didn't know. I, 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 Katie Clemens, who's one of my Facebook friends. Hi, Katie. Um, she, um, said, uh, that it wasn't great. And I was like, Oh, I bet it's not great. No, and I have some things to say about Melissa McCarthy movies in general. I, I, I've had enough. I've had enough of crappy Melissa McCarthy movies. And I don't know who I got to talk to to get some changes made. Mm -hmm. Seriously. You I'm know, it's like they, and, and here's the thing. They put Melissa her in McCarthy's a movie. Getting, they put her in a movie because they're like, without a script. I'm like, well, we'll just let her do a bunch of stuff and we'll film it. It's like, you know what? Write yep. a movie for her. Correct. Because when you give her, I mean... Did you ever see, oh, I can't think of the name, but it was, a drama, it was a drama that she was in. Oh, uh, well, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Yes. She was great in that. And it's because I know. she's a wildly talented individual, wildly talented in all genres. And if you give, I mean, and I'm sorry, it all starts and ends with writing. I don't care what anybody says. She's an immensely talented comedic actress. But again, she's better when she has good writing around her because she can do anything with it. Anyway, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to talk about this today because I could literally talk. It was, you'll, I'm not going to say anything. You'll see what I'm talking about. If you, if you choose to watch it, uh, you know what? Maybe you, she said you should write a movie, uh, about Gwen Frostick. Hmm. 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 It's not a terrible hmm. idea, Monica. Not a terrible hmm. idea. It's not a Writer's terrible idea. Workshop. At all. Writer's workshop. <laughs> oh my gosh. That'd be so fun. <laughs> I've always yes, wanted to do be, like a bunch of Mm -hmm. a bunch of research and like just sit around and research and read other people's crap and then write my own crap. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> there you go. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that idea. So anyway, until next week, you guys will probably be joining you from someplace from some mall while my sister tries to <laughs> help me find clothes. That I, uh, you know, uh, what? I had cool ideas for Saturday, Jenny, too. I had a, I had a rainy day idea and a sunny day idea, and now they're totally off the, I mean, fortunately, wait, you'll be back in the summer. What were your ideas? Okay, so the sunny day idea was that we have this trail in Jackson uh, that we could uh, hike, and they also have rented bikes, so you can bike mm -hmm. down the trail, and I thought we could rent bikes and reenact scenes from um, 
uh, you know, doe, a deer, a female deer, and ride the, the bike. opening sequence, have, the opening uh, Tour de France sequence from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, duh. <laughs> exactly. And then they have a crepe place in Jackson, I know, surprisingly. Um, and we could go have crepes. That was our sunny day idea. And my clout, my rainy day idea was that we would go to the cat cafe and hang out with cats. Oh, I love that place. That's the place that does cat yoga, doesn't it? It does, right? So we could hang out with kitties and we could be like, hey, you guys should come here, give them money, you know, and here's some cats to adopt. So two awesome ideas that we'll have to do later so that we can go to the mall. <laughs> I'm not saying that. That's Those things won't happen. <laughs> now I might have to motivate myself to just find everything online and be like, whatever, <laughs> done. <laughs> Yeah, you just had to yeah, motivate so, me with crepes and cats, and I'm pretty much I'm like, oh, I'll figure this out. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because I had cool stuff that we could do, uh, and then you're like, hey, let's go to the mall, and I'm like, is it 1988? Uh, okay, is the for record, the record store open? I didn't. Do say, we have to go to Ulta's? Let's go to the mall. I was like, I reluctantly have to buy clothes, and I think I have to go to the mall. That's how exactly <laughs> how that went. <laughs> Let's not pretend for a minute that I was like, oh boy, the mall! Because that's Can we go to Victoria's Secret? Ever. <laughs> I have my mall headache and I'm not even at the mall yet. Because for those of you that don't know me, going to the mall gives me a headache all the time. And I already have it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, all righty then. Well, until next week. Until next week, thanks, everybody. Go out and uh, look up, and as the people like to say, do your own research on Gwen Frostick, okay? Even yeah. though we did yeah. most of it for you, so you're welcome. Yeah, like exactly. Again. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, have a great week, you guys. Oh, wait. How the hell did you do you get a cat into the Lotus? I'm like, um, they just get themselves into it. You have oh, to get have them Have you ever out. seen a cat do that? I'm like, they can put their head up over their leg, up over their head, and then clean their butt. I mean, I, they're, they're yoga masters. They are. Not they're way better at it. So. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Aunt Julie. You guys are awesome. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good weekend. <laughs>